the season of Advent. A couple of Sundays ago, I concluded my sermon by telling the story about how the International Airport in Houston, Texas, about four years ago, had a large number of complaints lodged against it for people having to wait an extremely long period of time to claim their baggage at the baggage claim area. The, the complaints had gotten to be so prolific that it, it was gaining national attention. But what the airport did, instead of trying to streamline their service so that the bags got more quickly from the airplane to the baggage claim area, instead of doing that, instead they began configuring their terminals so it would take people longer to walk from the airplanes down to claim their baggage in the baggage area. You see, the airport understood that what people did while they waited mattered. It made a difference and the complaints dropped. Even though people were taking longer to get from the plane to the baggage claim area, they weren't having to stand around and wait as long, and therefore the complaints really went down. Again, what we do while we wait makes a difference. The season of Advent is a season in which we reenact waiting for the Messiah to come. We reenact the birth of Jesus, the Messiah who would save us from the sins of the world. Likewise, what we do even now as we are in this season of Advent, what we do while we wait matters. It makes a difference. In Matthew chapter 25, Jesus has three parables that Matthew, the, the gospel writer, has put right back to back to back, and they all pertain to waiting. The, the first parable is the parable of the bridesmaids, the ten bridesmaids, how they were waiting for the groom to arrive for the celebration of the wedding, but the groom was late in arriving, and so night came, and five of these bridesmaids had brought enough oil for their lamps to keep their lamps lit through the night, and five had not brought enough oil, and so therefore they had to leave from waiting for the a groom to arrive to go buy more oil for their lamps to keep them lit. But in the process of being gone to purchase the extra oil, they missed the arrival of the bridegroom. And these bridesmaids are said to be foolish because they were not prepared for the waiting. The second parable in Matthew 25 that Jesus tells is a parable of the pounds where a master leaves for a trip and he leaves his three of his servants bags of silver that they are to use in his absence to make more money with. But the third, two of them use the money for that purpose and they make more money for their master. But the third one, instead, he is afraid of losing it. And so he hides it. He buries the bag of silver in the ground and hides it and gives that back to his master when his master returns. The master is displeased with him. What that servant did while he waited for the return of his master what was not what was called for. And the third parable on waiting in, in that chapter is the parable of the sheep and the goats, where we're told that when the Son of Man returns, that is when Jesus returns at the end of time, he will judge people. And he'll divide people according, some are labeled as sheep, some are labeled as goats. The goats are, are considered to be the bad, and the sheep are considered to be the good. And to the sheep, we're told that Jesus will say, you're welcome into my Father's kingdom because when I was hungry, you fed me. When I was thirsty, you gave me something to drink. When I was in prison, you visited me. When I was naked, you clothed me. And the people who are considered to be the sheep will say, well, when did we do that? And Jesus says, as much as you did it to, to the least of one of these, that is to one of these people in need, you've done it to me. That is how you lived while you waited, that you, you had compassion for people while you waited for my return, and it was the same as doing it unto me. While we wait right now during the season of Advent, but also waiting for this pandemic to, to be over with and for us to get beyond all the various racial tensions and other things that are going on around us, what we do while we wait matters. And if there's one thing I could, I could challenge us to do while we waited, it would be this to begin choosing to see people as made in the image of God rather than choosing to see people with human labels, human labels such as liberal or conservative, labels such as 
enemy or neighbor, immigrant or citizen, a supporter of Black Lives Matter or a supporter of the blue. We need to choose to see people as made in the image of God rather than choosing to see them with human labels because when we choose to see people as made in the image of God, it will enable us to, to see them as Jesus does and that will change our behavior towards them. What we do while we wait matters.